Hello, my name is Joe Clark. I'm the founder of TaskBuild.io, and I'm just going to show you quickly how you can use Hotwire to dynamically show and hide form options. So, for example, if you click shoe here, nothing happens. If we click chips, we get an organic field. If we check that, we get a farm name. So, let's take a look how we can do that with Hotwire and a little bit of stimulus. So, we'll switch back to our app here, and we're just starting with a basic scaffolding. And what we want to do is change that product type into a select box. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to wrap the is organic option to only show if the product type is equal to chips. We also don't want that form name to show unless it's organic as well. So we should wrap that up. It's organic. Like that. Now if we reload our new product, uh, nothing's going to happen yet. Those two things are just going to be hidden. So what we need to do is create a stimulus controller to uh, refresh this page and refresh the turbo frame. So we need to add a turbo frame tag at the top. We're going to call it product form. We're going to give it a target at top. What that's going to do is when we create a new product, we want it to refresh the page. Dumped all that. Okay, now we're going to duplicate the hello controller, stimulus controller, and create a new controller called sub action controller. And I'm going to copy and paste the controller that I've already written. And we'll go over this. This controller takes a couple of different values, frame name, new target, sub action, and sub action ID. So for the first field, we just need the frame name and the sub action. So we're going to come back to our select box. We're going to tell it which controller to use, sub action controller, and the action we want to do, change, call the sub action controller, and we're going to call update and submit method and then sub action sub action value we want to be refresh and I will show you how all this works in one moment we also want to give pass the frame name because we're going to need that as well Okay, now let's take a look at the controller to see what this update and submit action does. So the first thing we do is we call the update frame target and sub action value. And there is a method here, come down here. It's going to add two hidden fields to the form automatically if they don't exist yet, called sub action and sub action ID. Sub action ID we're not going to use right now, but the sub action we are and we remember we passed the value in of refresh. So that's going to send a sub action parameter to our form called refresh. And it's also going to change the name of the target if we pass one in the controller as well, but we're not using it in that instance. So now we need to take a look at our products controller. In the create method, we want to check for that parameter. Of refresh. Oh, sorry. Sub action equals refresh. And if that's there, we simply want to render out new again. Now, if we come over and refresh our new form, I'm about to change that to an else if. Now we look at it again. We change the product type to chips. Is organic going to show? 
this checkbox doesn't do anything yet because we haven't wired that up to our controller. So when you come back to the form, and I'm going to go ahead and wire that up doing the same method. The exact same values as the drop down box. We'll see that also works with checkboxes. All right, there's one more change we need to make to our controller in order for this to work when we're editing. So what we need to do is come down to our update method and change this to an else if, if params sub action is equal to refresh to the product uh, object. We want to say attributes equals product params. What that's going to do is update the object with the parameters that have been passed, but it's not going to save it into the database because we don't want to save it yet. And then we want to render out edit again. So now if we come over here, go ahead and create a new object. Here it works with editing as well. Now, you notice we have an issue here where this refreshes to a blank page when we submit. What we need to do to fix that is come down to the form. If we want to tell, we want to use our stimulus controller to update the target back to top. So, controller, sub action. Do click sub action update. Now I want to pass in the original frame name, which is product form, so we can copy and paste that. Then we want to pass in, see here we have a new target value we can use. A new dash target. We want the target to be top. Now, if we come back to our form, refresh it, submit it, it's going to work like it should. All right, that's a quick look at how to make dynamic forms with Hotwire. If you have any questions, be sure to hit me up on Twitter.